Oh, hey there. Welcome back to AM Solar. Let me show you the latest system we built. Come on in. So here we got a brand new Airstream and uh, we have the bed removed for the moment and we managed to put the whole system underneath here. So this is the Victron uh, VE Bus VMS Lithium system. And these are the smallest and lightest batteries we have been able to find so far. So these are 24 volts, 200 amp hours a piece. So we've got a total of 800 amp hours here. Um, we're running all those into the Lynx distributor, which is fusing each battery individually and allowing us to make sure they're evenly balanced. So we've got equally length cables all across the system here. And then that feeds down into our battery monitor. We got a shunt down here. Um, we're using the smart shunt and that basically feeds our system, which I've got right over here, control area. And so we're using the Serbo display. I'll show you guys that display in just a moment, but here's the Serbo itself. Um, we've also got the B bus BMS here. This is actually the, uh, the control unit for the batteries. So these batteries basically have an external BMS, which means that as um, they demand to protect themselves for one reason or another, they're communicating that to this box, which then protects the whole system by turning off things like the inverter and loads. Um, and also charging sources in case of freezing conditions and other things like that. Um, so we've got our master switch. Uh, actually, we've got our ma inverter switch here. And uh, also main DC disconnect is a little switch on this one because we're using a DC converter, which if you come over here, I can show you real quick. This is the um, Orion 70 amp step down converter. So basically these are 24 volt batteries, but of course our RV needs 12 volts for the system. So we're running the 24 volts into this, which then feeds our 12 volt system. And of course, this is what's control, or the BMS controls this in case of an emergency shutting off the loads. Uh, we've also got 800 watts of solar on the roof, and we've got a 30 amp solar charge controller here to pick up that energy. And that is uh, gonna charge directly at 24 volts. That's why we're able to get away with a 30 amp instead of a 50. So overall, a pretty slick little system. Um, and then if I take a look up there, oh yeah, inverter over here. We got the Quattro uh, 24 volt 5000 VA, so pretty beastly. You can run a couple air conditioners off that, off just right off these batteries if you want to. Probably not for super long, but <laughs> it'll work. And then over here we've got the brand new Touch 70 display. This is our first install of it. Um, nice look. It's much better than the Touch 50 and a lot easier to operate. So this is our main display, the Pages display. So this is going to incorporate all the components in the system and give you the information of where energy is coming from and going to. And you can see these little dotted lines, which actually share, um, it tells you which direction the energy is flowing. So we've got um, shore power connected and basically done charging. So um, shore is not doing a whole lot. We have very minimal loads over here, but shore power comes through at AC, goes through the inverter and then AC output here. And then this is where it bridges into the DC system. So basically AC on the top, DC on the bottom. You've got your battery over here, which your, uh, has your net energy, plus or minus energy going in or out here voltage uh, percentage of course and then DC loads this is going to display actually it's kind of an accumulation of whatever leftover energy is not accounted for in the system um, and that would be DC loads so you know if I turn off a light here you're going to see that that DC load value goes down because we're drawing less energy from the output and then solar over here which also is full, full so we're not charging at the moment but um, we got solar active in the system as well and uh, we can do some cool stuff here. So with the inverter, we can actually turn this down to zero. Oops, I'm sorry, forget this. The digital multi-control over here takes control of the inverter. So you actually have to just interface with this. I kind of like this as a better option. So we can turn the current limiter all the way down, which will actually disconnect us from shore power and put us into invert mode. So you'll see that the uh, AC input disconnects and we start to see energy flowing from the batteries. So now we're draining battery power to feed the AC loads. Um, so that's gonna allow power to come directly from the DC system and eventually would allow the solar charger to start working here. So uh, let's talk about the solar route real quick. We actually were able to route the solar right through this column when we installed these monitors and that was one of the best locations we could find. So of course we had to route um, up underneath and through the belly pan and then up through this column here and yeah, there's, there's a little gap between the TV um, and this panel, which really makes it nice. So we just disassembled this. We routed our wires up for a monitor and the solar, and then we actually punched right through the roof. 
We use the AM solar combiner box to put um, eight panels in, and that is sitting just underneath one of the solar panels up there. Um, we've also got uh, AC input over here. We've got both the Watchdog and the AM Solar Smart uh, phase selector. Those are both hidden underneath there, so I won't show you that. But the um, Watchdog is the EPO power, um, I forget what they call it, but essentially it's gonna be a power shut off system. So it's gonna protect you from brownouts, from under voltage, bad wiring, and of course from surges. So pretty co uh, cool little system. <laughs> First off, you have to be careful about how you mount panels on these. We always tape down, we never screw. But um, the other part is we're using obsidian panels on this. So we do have our support rails. The obsidian 100s are pretty long and a little flexible. So they tend to get a little flexy and, and concerned us um, mounting them on the endpoints, which you kind of have to do on the Airstreams. So we end up using these um, support beams that reinforce the ends. And then, yeah, you mount the, mount the feet right onto the roof. We have to use Sika Flex um, and VHB tape to make sure that they're well stuck down and, and safe. We, you know, some of the time we'll, we'll set up so the panels are nice and flat and we'll use like a shorter foot on the inside, taller one on the outside, and that way you've got a more level, um, more solar efficient system. But other times we'll actually put a more flat just for looks. And yeah, I think we went somewhere in the middle. So, you know, looks but efficiency as well, because solar panels can be uh, pretty obvious on the sides of these things. Make sure to set your current limiter correctly when you plug in a shore power. <laughs> um, one thing to mention about this inverter actually is that when you connect the shore power, you can um, set, dial in this current limiter here to the value of your shore connection, and it's going to hybridize, or that's a, you know, a, a term in the industry. So essentially the inverter is going to um, hybridize shore power and inverted power. So you're going to be drawing up to 15 amps from shore, both to charge the batteries and for your AC loads. But as you approach that value with your AC loads, the charger is gonna turn off or, or reduce until it turns off. And eventually it's gonna turn around and assist the system. So you're gonna actually be draining your battery a little bit to assist the loads. But that allows you to do a lot of cool stuff. So on 15 amp service or even with a small generator, you can run one AC, you can run two ACs. You can run up to 30 amps um, off of 15 amp service. And if you're on 30 amp service, you can run up to 50 amps because you can add an additional 20 amps to the system. So basically you can operate like you're on a higher power source than you are within reason because you have to make sure you're maintaining your batteries as well. So cool little feature. Um, but that's one little thing that you want to make sure you set or else you're going to run into a lot of issues popping breakers or overloading the system. So make sure you get your chronometer set correctly. Yeah, I think that's about it. And uh, thank you for joining us today. See you next time.